Okay, so uh, shall we begin? Welcome to the MedStarter Healthcare Innovator Club, a place where you can have inclusive conversations all about healthcare innovation. Uh, we run 20 to 40 rooms a week all about healthcare innovation uh, in all different areas, everything from Alzheimer's to uh, A16Z to ZocDoc to you know, Parkinson's uh, to mental health innovations, to the future of healthcare, to history of healthcare. Last night we did uh, innovations in epidemiology. Uh, a room, so uh, all different topics, including fun things like uh, one we call Fight Club, which is uh, basically controversial topics and, and discussed in a very reasonable yet um, conflicting kind of way, you know, not, not pulling any punches, but you know, trying to be respectful. Um, and fun things like uh, gong shows and, you know, karaoke nights and whatever. And so what it really is, it's a community of people who have focused on healthcare innovation and, uh, and some amazing money we have on stage here. So every, every once in a while we do moderator uh, training sessions uh, where we crowdsource great moderation methods from the MedStart moderators. Um, this is not our first time doing this, but it is the first time I think we're going to successfully record it. So I am very happy to be joined by some of the MedStarter moderators. There are over 70 people uh, who have been moderating MedStarter rooms regularly, and I'm sure you'll hear from more of them today. But today, we have a few of the better ones here, too. So we're going to jump right into the moderating these on the MedStarter blog. Um, which uh, and, and direct links to the individual areas on medstarter.club. Um, when I say areas, I mean the write-ups. Uh, so we've taken notes on this before, and um, and uh, you know we've done these before, and, and we and we wrote down a lot of the really the best moderation things here. So you know I always like to start out with um, with you know the number one thing that you need to do when you moderate a room is um, be respectful, right? It's, it's really hard to have a good conversation if there isn't respect first. And granted, you don't know if people deserve your respect, but you know, give people the, um, the benefit of the doubt, right? Um, so that's, that's my first tip. Um, if you look on the model, the first one is to the way the start works, which is inclusive. Healthcare, you know, healthcare companies, but certainly for healthcare, you really have to include the patient. You've got providers of all sorts, um, everybody from, you know, the people who sweep the floor to the people who do the complicated surgeries to the people who run the hospitals, um, and then of course including partners and, and institutions and all of the big companies and governments, you know. Because when you have a more inclusive conversation, you're going to get to um, the heart of the matter from everybody's perspective. If you just think about the patient's perspective, you just think about the doctor's perspective, you're not going to think about who's going to pay for these things um, and all of the intermediaries that are involved. So um, so those are my first two tips. And uh, But I, but I want to hear from, from the amazing uh, other MedStarter moderators. So they'll introduce themselves in 10 seconds or less. You can always read their bio pro profiles later. Um, but then they're going to talk about their favorite methods and maybe give some examples. So Angelique, our longest standing MedStarter moderator other than me, um, you, do you have a, a, your favorite uh, moderator training tip you want to share with everybody? For sure. Thank you, Alex. And I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm, I'm Angelique Robertson. You could read a little bit about in my profile, but I have had, like Alex said, the policy matters room for about 13 weeks, and now I hold the future matters um, uh, room um, under uh, NetStarter. What I love about uh, moderating is the, is the soft side. It's a soft skill. Um, because we're in healthcare and we tend to get a lot of global audience, what I try to do is um, one, active um, listening understand that we have a global presence and audience and speakers and as they share make sure that we um, acknowledge their perspective which is usually different from the US 
another thing is to make sure that I take notes high level so I can recap when I reset the room. Someone else may speak about resetting the room. Be cognizant of your audience, especially the newcomers that wear the party hats so that they are aware that they don't have to be an expert in order to come and share their thoughts. Everyone has a story that's about being um, inclusive and that um, others don't be afraid to share. Another tip is um, as you know why you're having a room, what you want the audience to take away when they leave that room and also know how to navigate depends on how the conversation is going, which takes just active listening and viewing your room. This is Angelique and I'm done speaking and I will circle back. Yeah, no, that, that's a lot. Uh, that's about five different major tips. So let's focus on one of them. Let's, let's talk about resetting a room and setting expectations for the, your attendees. The people who come to a room come there because of the title and the people who are there. They have a certain expectation when they come to a room, right? That they're going to, in this case, hear about moderator training specific to healthcare innovation discussions, right? Um, and and when they come, that's what they. And so, if you get off topic, it's it's going to be a problem, right? So, if we started talking like we were in the beginning about how to record rooms and things like that. Um, and that was part of the regular show, then somebody would have said, hey, let's take a minute to reset the room. Today we're talking about moderator training and we're gonna go around popcorn style with the MedStarter moderators, the people who have been running rooms for about four months now here on Clubhouse, really great experts and leaders in healthcare innovation that uh, have, have learned how and are, and are happy to help teach you how to moderate. So with that, let's jump to the next person here up on stage. Um, I know Shalisha uh, Grace Medella is um, is very busy. She's been moving and things like that. So I don't know if she's got limited time today. So I just want to be respectful and ask my, my friends and co-moderators here if we can let Shalisha jump the line. And because I know she's done a ton of moderating and I know she's like crazy busy this week. Shalisha, do you need to go now? Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. So it's, a, um, it's actually my last day at my current job and I have a meeting at 8.30. <laughs> um, but it's so great seeing you all. I know I've been MIA, um, but um, thank you for doing this training, um, which I think is going to be super helpful. I always learned a ton from you all and just listening in, which I think is the biggest tip is like, you know, follow your favorite moderators. Um, who are all like on the stage with me um, and you know pick up on things and and you know do them in your own rooms I think um, which I'm not modeling right now but uh, it, I think one of the things is also you want to set the uh, the framework of how much time um, people have to share and uh, you know just having because it really helps with pacing the room so just like as you're doing popcorns like hey like um, you know, if you could share like in a couple minutes your thoughts or with your name and your role and what you're doing um, helps. I've found this is Shalisha and I'm done speaking. <clears throat> oh, that's that's great. And and you notice what she did at the end there, right? She said, "Is this Shalisha?" And I'm done speaking. Uh, sorry for the slurring. I'm wearing those teeth aligner things. Um, so uh, uh, so what that is for is for. people people who are hearing or vision impaired and they're using text-to-speech tech but unfortunately text-to-speech tech is not good enough that it's going to automatically label this is Alex Fair speaking, this is Angelique Grubatel speaking, this is Kimberly speaking um, so we have to do that sort of ourselves. Now granted this is not a busy room but we are using Otter AI to translate this for this um, and we're going to, you know, post that transcription, and so it's particularly helpful here. So this is Alex Fair, and I'm done speaking. And if we want to pick up where we left off on the uh, PTR order, um, and thanks, Shalisha, for joining us on your last day. Uh, it's pretty awesome, and I'm very happy and proud to to see that that that's been that that you got what you wanted. Um, and if I recall, you had you know you had a really good situation. So that's that's great. Um, we love to see our, our friends advancing. So I think we're up to Kimley. So Kimley is a relatively new MedStarter moderator, and she came here to listen. But I'm going to go ahead and bet that Kimley has some insights onto how to moderate well. Would you like to talk about that a little bit, Kimley, or should we can go to Janet if not? 
Sure, I would. But before we, before I do, can you talk about PTR and the different um, formats? Oh, we'll um, get what to they mean, we'll, please. We'll get to everything. But um, PTR is short for pull to refresh, right? So if you were to click on anywhere on the screen, but I usually choose somebody like Angelique and say, click on Angelique's face, hold down on your thumb. Oops, hang on. That's different. Okay, don't hold down too long. And, and slide down um, and then let go. That's called pull to refresh. You're basically pulling her down and then letting go. And then what that'll do is it'll change the pictures um, if people have updated their profile pictures. Um, and it'll change the order. It'll, you know, put, so Ascari, you know, is a moderator, so I'm going to make him a moderator now. And if he had come here before Shalisha, then it would then move him ahead of Shalisha. It doesn't actually work like that, but because he, he didn't. But, um, but if somebody like changes their picture, so if everybody wants to change their pictures, we have an example, um, you know, that's good. And I guess I should take off my, my, uh, my red um, heart-shaped glasses thug look, um, which, you know, is appropriate at times, but um, is, is not the real me. So, um, so I'm switching my picture now. And so for those of you who are watching my screen, you can see that. Um, so now I have changed my picture. Uh, and if you pull the refresh now, you'll see that uh, my picture changed. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's that's pull to refresh. You can also change your picture by clicking your face three times, essentially. So you go to the top right corner, click on your icon, click on your icon now in the top left corner, and then click on your icon uh, in the middle of the screen, and you can either pick from the library or take a photo. So those are two little, two little, you know, basic one-on-one level uh, tricks here. So, okay, so I've done that, Kimberly. Uh, do you have, are you ready to discuss your, your insights, your thoughts, your ideas? Sure. Um, so um, the thing that I've learned is um, that no, there is no one leaves the, um, the moderator by themselves. So um, I've been fortunate enough as we have been um, uh, doing our room that um, there's always a, a co-moderator or an additional moderator. And um, even when I've attended some of the other starter rooms, um, and, uh, not leaving that moderator yeah, there we, by we, we call that one, friends don't let friends moderate alone. Um, and you really should have a team with, um, with sort of assigned roles, right? So you saw that when we were setting up this room, uh, before we started the recording, uh, I verbalized that, hey, we got to share this on the back channel, and Angelique and I got that. Similarly, when, uh, I don't know if you noticed, Kimberly, but there were people who were coming who wanted to come up to the stage. One guy didn't have much of a background, and I don't know about you guys, but, you know, if somebody is playing security or bouncer or whatever, um, you know, that's one of the roles. And we talk about this in the in the notes uh, that are on medstarter.club. Um, that the security, uh, the designated security person is basically always going to check the people who say they want to come up on stage. And it's not a simple thing, right? So if somebody has like zero followers and no profile, you can definitely not let them up if they're, if, if a couple other things are, are clear, right? So if you look at who referred them and the person who referred them also has no followers, that's a bad sign. If they don't have social media connections, it's a bad sign. Um, and then if you do choose to let them up, um, I would always recommend that the person doing security make sure that they keep their thumb over the person's profile um, and are ready to, to remove them from the stage immediately. Because if you don't and they leave on their own, then they can come back and harass you all the time. Unfortunately, if you have a popular room, you're almost always going to attract some trolls. Um, trolls are just people who want to interrupt. For, I don't know why, but they they you know get some sort of special joy out of you know messing with other people's conversations. So you do have to watch out for folks like that. So there's a security role um, if you're doing note taking. So in a couple of the rooms we do, we take copious notes. So either Patrick or I will take notes for each other, or do room setups or whatever. So you might have you know the administrative you know uh, document or uh, going on. If you've got somebody doing the recording, that's another role um, because it's you know to do that well, you know it, you kind of have to be doing a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, what other roles have I forgotten, guys? 
Hey, Pat. Um, sometimes. Hey, Alex. Sometimes, Alex, um, if we are doing a room and it attracts sale, hard sellers, we, we also try to monitor that and have them go in the back channel. But we, we try to make sure that if that room is not um, encouraging uh, any hard sale, then the co-mods would also be brought in to just look for that so that the experience in the room could be pleasant. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, nobody wants to come in here to be sold hard. Um, no, I admit that I am guilty of doing that at times. Uh, we did it for Unite for India when a guy who had 20 Indian television sh stations showed up. But that was for a really good cause. So, I mean, there really has to be a good reason for it. And still, the moderators of that room were not that, you know, wild about uh, what we were doing. Um, so, so, so I, you know, it's understandable. Oh, here's another thing. I don't know if you guys saw, but Angelique just came up with a little phone call. So another role when you're, so there's usually a main host. So in this scenario, I'm the main host, but I know that Angelique has my back. So, you know, as the longest standing sort of moderator other than me and Patrick, you know, she's totally experienced and she knows that if my little phone icon comes up, I have to take an important call or whatever. I know she's going to run the room perfectly. So there's a host and there's also the co-host or backup host. It's always great to have at least two, and I know that if me and Angelique get messed up, then Michael or Patrick or Janet can take over. Um, and we'll be able to run this moderator training session because they've been in these moderator training sessions before. Um, so, uh, you know, so, so those are really good points. So, Kimberly, did you want to uh, bring up a, a second point? Just, sure. I, I just, I like the idea of drilling down as we go as opposed to doing, you know, listing out five or six things like Angelique did just because. I know that if you tell me five things, I'm going to forget them. If you tell me one thing at a time and then <laughs> go into detail, um, then I'll, you know, it makes more of an impression. Um, so uh, anyway, so Kimberly, what was your second idea? Sure. Um, to talk about, um, the, to go further into the security person, the one that's um, um, maintaining or t take, putting people on stage or taking them off, the way to do that or to remove a person from the room altogether is to touch the, the profile of that person. And then there are um, there will be three dots up in the top right corner. And that gives you a list of block, remove from room, or, re or remove and report. So that's to take that just a little further, um, what you were saying as far as the person that's maintaining the security. And then um, and, um, the other piece is um, paying attention to your um, stage. And uh, of course, like going in order, but then you have someone who might want to speak on the topic. Of course, you let the people who are, are coming up to speak, um, give them the opportunity, your guests, give them the opportunity to speak, but paying attention that um, one of your, uh, either the moderators or someone else that's on the stage uh, wanted to speak because you'll see them open, opening and closing their mic and to acknowledge them at that time. And then last is the clapping. Well, Okay, so yeah, that's a really great point. I didn't even know that, Kimberly. Um, so uh, if you're watching the video now, Patrick's going to start uh, doing things like showing examples. So it's a little lagged. So he's going to show how to do a PTR. He's going to show how to do a, a screen change from that device uh, that's doing the screen recording. And he'll show off uh, what Kimberly was talking about, hitting the dot, dot, dots on an individual. Um, so yeah, those are really great points, Kimberly. Anybody have anything to add to that? Well, I just wanted to say congrats to Shalisha. I don't know what you're moving on to, but it sounds great. So congratulations. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, this, is, <laughs> this is a moder Let me just reset the room for a second. This is a moderator training session. And while this is community and we, we love each other and we care about each other, um, this is also for posterity too. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's say discussion like that, uh, to, let's keep it to a minimum. Um, but yes, we're all very proud and happy for Shalisha. <laughs> I'm sorry for raining on that. Um, but it's also a good way to show an example of what not to do, you know, don't be rude to your team, but, uh, but also you do want to maybe be a little rude while keeping us focused because really we're trying to deliver a service, right? We're delivering a really great conversation about whatever it is that we're talking about today, right? Um, and if we go off topic, yeah, it's a little fun for, you know, 30 seconds, but as soon as you go off, off the rails, 
you're going to find that people are going to start leaving. Um, okay, so, uh, Shalisha, do you want to respond <laughs> now that I've just pooped on the idea of, of having personal conversation? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, thank you so much, Oscari. Good to see you. Um, a, a tip kind of related to that is, you know, when I see there is a med mod moderator, I know that I can trust them and I'm in good hands, so... I know I struggled with, for a while with passing the baton on, but, you know, everyone here does a really good job. So, um, you know, don't be worried if, like, you need to run or something. I can count on, you know, Janet, Scar, anyone here to be like, hey, I have to, like, take a break for, like, 10 minutes. But if you could just moderate for a little bit, I'll come back. Um, so that's something that we do a really great job of here. I remember the first time I did that to you. <laughs> like, you had run a really amazing room for, like, 90 minutes and you had to go and, I, and and for like the last 10 15 minutes you'd be saying okay we're gonna wrap this up or whatever and i'm like messaging you on the back channels like shalisha i really want to continue the conversation this is really great you know i can take over so finally i had to do it verbally because she was paying attention to the screen and that is one of the things that we'll talk about later is the back channel um yeah so she was new to it and she was a little surprised and didn't understand it at first but then i think the conversation went for like four more hours and we got so much more done so much more discussed so much more learned and shared um in that conversation which is about hospital leadership which is you know one of the more challenging topics um so yeah no you you, you learn very quickly and beautifully and you're one of our favorite months and we do miss you so we're hoping that you settle in and come on back uh, i do approve so this is a new thing that's not in the old tips. I approve and think it's a really great idea to take Clubhouse vacations. This is a super addictive app, right? And it can suck up all your time and you're not going to get other important stuff done. I know what happened to me. Um, and But then I took a vacation, like eight days, then I threw in an extra five days. So I took like a two-week Clubhouse vacation and it was wonderful. Because um, when I came back, I was energized, I was excited again. And, um, and it was really nice. Even now, I turn off my notifications, you know, for, you know, when I know I need to get other stuff done. Um, and, and to Shalisha's point, you can trust that other people will keep the ball rolling you know, if, you know, they're into whatever the topic is. So Janet has done a ton of rooms that I am interested in, but I just know I cannot spend 40 hours a week on Clubhouse, but I trust that Janet's gonna have those great conversations. She's gonna run them well. And that, you know, the goals of driving healthcare innovation from the nurses and the patient's perspective will be, you know, well served by what, what Janet Manning does chooses to do. Speaking of which, hello, good morning, Janet. Uh, what gems do you have to drop for us today about MedStarter, not Med, just MedStarter, but Clubhouse moderating MedStarter style? Oh, good morning, good morning. Um, yes, thank, thanks for having me up. I, um, one of the things I absolutely like about um, MedStarter moderation is the inclusiveness of it, as well as the ability to change. First, I started with um, one topic, and now um, the topic that of, of interest and what is passionate for me is putting patients first. One tip, um, well, two, I'm gonna give two tips. Two tips I wanted to give. One is when you're choosing your title, because we're talking about healthcare innovation, and as Alex mentioned, we need to take breaks from Clubhouse. I do that a lot. Um, make your title um, informative or and educational or innovative. That way that is still advancing healthcare when you make a title like patients first or moderated training. You're thinking, oh, I need to think about what I say and I need to plan my room. And that's a way of um, educating um, people and helping um, advance um, healthcare innovation because they may not be able to come to your room, but they can read the title. And another thing that I've been doing, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Twitter are things you can access from a laptop. And it's smoother sometimes to open up your back channel on a different device so that you can communicate easily without losing your place in, in, the, um, in the order or forgetting to pe pull to refresh and sometimes calling on different persons um, when it's not their turn, which is okay if it's like a physician and you know they have very limited time. You know, I tend to go ahead and call them up or if it's a patient because my rooms are patient centric and, and the patient wants to speak and may want to talk for a long time. I will allow that. I think it's OK because patients want to be heard and we do 
rarely um, get patients in the room, so I do want more patients to speak. So those are just a few tips, um, and I've enjoyed um, listening to everything. And again, congratulations, Shalise. I know it's not personal room, but I did. I am very proud of you. And thanks for having this room, Alex. This is Janet, and I'm done speaking. Shalise's not even here. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, those are great tips, Janet. Um, and and uh, I think this leads to the whole back channel discussion because. Um, you know, it's uh, one of the most enjoyable aspects I've found of of, uh, of this group, MedStar moderators, is uh, the back channel where we'll make jokes and we'll, you know, talk about all sorts of stuff, families and things like congratulations, Shalisha, um, and birthdays and what have you. But also, while we're doing a room like this, what we usually do is we have a dedicated back channel, especially for a show. So a show is a show that gets done every week, like Angelique's show or, or Kimley's uh, Healthcare Demystified, Health Tech Demystified, or Janet's um, patient uh, focus shows, or, or, or even Ascari's new uh, epidemiology and innovation. So the, the people who are hosting the conversation, they might have something like, oh, well, that person, you know, Christina, she, you know, Christina Wright came to the, you know, wants to come up on stage and somebody like Jan will say, oh, yeah, I know Christina, she'll be great, I'm sure she has something great to add. So it, it helps you sort of vet uh, people who are coming up on stage or if somebody is going off the rails in a pitch or whatever, you know, it's great to have say, you know, we have to, um, you know, try to get this back in control or whatever. Um, so it's so the back channel, but it's also a place to make jokes or whatever, um, you know, as, as, you know, uh, as, as one does. Um, so yes, we usually do that either on Instagram or uh, WhatsApp. Um, those are usually the two best things for that, uh, as most people have um, most people have some sort of Instagram connection. Um, so that's great. Uh, anybody else want to chime in on anything that Janet said before we move on? Incidentally, this is called sort of popcorn style, but with with trusted moderators, right? So popcorn style means you bounce all around. Um, you know, once everybody's introduced. But here we're doing PTR order, which is to go in order across and then down in terms of, you know, people who showed up. And then once we get past that, we're just going to popcorn around. That means like I'm going to say, hey, who wants to talk about whatever, just like I'm doing after Janet spoke, right? So this is PTR with popcorn with trusted moderators because I trust uh, everybody on this stage, uh, or at least the Green Beans, who I know really well, um, to be able to... Um, you know, chime in and add so much more color on it. And the people we have allowed up on stage are also trusted individuals by um, by some of the moderators. So so you guys can pop in too. Although a lot of people don't do it that way. In MedStar rooms, we tend to not say, oh, you haven't spoken yet, therefore you can't speak. We think everybody's got value um, and we'd love to hear, hear from you. Uh, well, let's just say it this way. They've got value until proven otherwise. Hey, <laughs> uh, hey this is... Hey, this is Dr. Jeff. I, I I do have a question for like Janet, and, and thank you very much for having me on stage. And 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 this is a question that I don't have an answer to that I am struggling with. So so don't think that I that I have an answer. Sometimes I'm um, speaking of of um, patients. Sometimes I notice that we allow patients on stage, and, and and that's obviously the like goal at times. But what I struggle with is sometimes um, moderators let the patient story go on for too long and 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 for me it's it's, it's more about the like greater good making sure that everyone gets plenty of 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 benefit from it but when one patient goes on for a long time what are some what are some tools that people use to help push the story along Do yeah that understand? that is that is one of the most challenging things. Janet, you want to have a shot at that? Absolutely. And I also I want to acknowledge the amazing contribution Sandra does um, with helping me co-moderate this room. She helped me develop the um, theme and make it a positive um, room for patients because we don't want um, the room to be sad because medical isn't beautiful all the time. You know, sometimes the stories are very devastating. So you do want to include uplifting things. What I have done and this is just me, um, because I don't want to cut off a patient because I, I want to hear them, but I don't want them to be re-traumatized by listening and ruminating on the experience. Most experiences that are shared tend to be negative. So what I do is 
I will talk to specific patients and say, do you mind, you know, sharing your story? You know, because again, healthcare is very personal. We want to respect their privacy and try to tailor it in a way, even in making the title something that is um, very technical, just because I know um, those negative stories will come out. That's why I was kind of gearing the patients toward like data, because I know medical records aren't going to be as traumatizing as like other experiences, but they will come out. So just in choosing the title, um, but I don't cut the patients off. I do let them speak. I, I, I that's just something I, I won't do. I feel like it's okay for them to speak and go on and on. I may. Um, so let me let me gently. demonstrate, Dr. Goffrey, one of the things that, that I will do if somebody is going on and on. Um, and, and no offense to Janet, but she understands what I'm doing here. This is an object lesson, right? So okay. this is only an hour training session. And I know Janet could talk for 30 minutes about this topic. <laughs> Okay, and but my job as the host is to try to keep the conversation on track. So let me just summarize, and this is one of the things that I'm sure Janet does, you know, what Janet's trying to say. Number one, be respectful, they're the patient. Number two, ask them to be respectful of the time of everybody listening. Um, and number three, maybe summarize and try to move things along or take the kernel of whatever they're saying, you know, about it. So it may be, you know, communication of patient instructions is not great let's talk about ways to to improve that you know note taking or you know uh you know signing into your patient portal or whatever so so you you can you can uh, you know what's what is it like the uh taekwondo moves kind of thing where you take the momentum of the person and you move it into a place that you want it to go um and uh and I personally, and it's it's difficult to do. Not everybody has an act for it. My favorite thing is to try to make, you know, uh, a joke. You know, to try to lighten the mood. Because if you hear patient story on top of patient story, on top of patient story, it's a total buzzkill, and it's going to really ruin your room, and nobody's going to ever want to come back again. But so you got to try to turn it into something positive. I find laughter is the best medicine. Um, you know, but it is definitely a dicey thing because you can hurt a lot of people's feelings i've done that um and uh so you know i wouldn't that's not that's that's not the one-on-one -on -one level thing so and and thank you for coming up with the question dr Godfrey, and thanks for what you do um you know, ed doc uh you know your books um so so yeah um is the book the the is that is that like a driving while black thing okay i don't want to get into <laughs> 11 steps most yeah to surviving police encounters I think that's probably, you know, a very important thing. Alex, you always amuse me, but thank you all very much. You all provided some very good insight. And Alex, I, I, I always like coming to your rooms because you moderate them and move them well. But thank you very much because you all did give me great insight. Well, thanks. thanks, thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, also thanks. speaks to uh, the point Alex made earlier about having a, a team and a plan and sometimes uh, if you're feeling like maybe you're not doing so well, you know, ping in some people that you know who are also knowledgeable, or even if they're not knowledgeable, that they have your back in the room. Um, and we had a, a room yesterday where we were discussing a field and some people may, a certain individual made a somewhat controversial topic, but we were able to sort of redirect it into uh, an interesting discussion. So uh, even if a patient comes on and they may be someone antagonistic, you can, like Alex was saying, you know, sort of redirect it. And if you do it well enough, uh, people will walk away feeling like they've been heard. And um, it also adds value to the audience. So always remember when you're speaking on Clubhouse, you're not only speaking to uh, the people on the stage, you're speaking to the audience. So you have a a, at least a dual a dual set of listeners that you're uh, speaking to. I'm Ascari and I'm done speaking. Thanks, Ascari. Yeah, that, those are great points. Um, I know Patrick. I know we have a we have a meeting starting shortly. Uh, before you go, is there any anything you want to um, you want to make sure we hit? Sure. So um, I always think it's easier when you're moderating a room if the room is kind of bigger. So I think when you first start the room, it's important to encourage people to ping people who would be interested in the subject in what we call the ping-a-thon 
and also to encourage the audience to come up for a participation I think is a big deal because the bigger the room usually you can keep the conversation going better so I'm going to go to the screen and we demonstrate what he's talking about uh, Patrick you want to moderate while I'm in sampling mode sure so um Usually when we first start a room, it's, it's usually pretty small, but if we get, everybody I think it's about 250 pings now, I believe. So even if there's only about 10 people in the room, if everybody uses those pings up, we can get a room going of a couple dozen or even sometimes a couple hundred people. And when you have all those people contributing to the discussion, you're, um, you're able to get into deeper topics. And also there isn't that awkward pause that sometimes you get in the smaller rooms. So Patrick, just to go further into what pinging is for those who don't know, there's um, when you have the green vein, well, when you don't do or don't have the green vein actually, there's a plus sign down in the um, the bottom. Um, if you select that plus sign, everyone that's following you or you're following, um, the ones that are um, that have a green dot in the right corner means that they're online right now, and then those that do not um, are on Clubhouse um, right now, and those that do not will have the if you go further down, you'll see they'll have the last time they were on Clubhouse, but you can still ping them and send them um, uh, a text message. This is Kimmy, and I'm done speaking. Hey, this is Gwen. I just wanted to add something on as it relates to pinging, if you don't mind. Um, one other great thing that I learned here from another room that I was unfamiliar with that I wanted to share is also while you are pinging people and you add that little plus sign, you'll see at the very top there's a little search. There's a little magnifying glass and it says search. If you put in there, let's say it's physician, healthcare, professional, etc. What's nice is with a specific topic, so that way it also helps you be really um, targeted as it relates to who you're peeing into the room that are within the healthcare and um, wellness uh, profession. So depending on obviously that particular room, whatever you may be you know, wanting to ping that person into, I just wanted to add that too, because I, I did not know that. And um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. I hope that is also very helpful. I'm done speaking. Gwen, did you know you can also search by emoji on Clubhouse? So when you yeah. pull up that search <laughs> bar, you can put in an emoji if you're uh, kind of moving quickly, put in the uh, doctor emoji and all anyone who has used it in their profile who follows you will come up as well. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you, Absolutely. Christina. I appreciate that. Um, another but, tip is also to um, is to understand the type of rooms that are available uh, um, when you schedule your room. I think we've seen town hall style, which is what the founders usually have. We see the just the free form, which is um, you just come in and you you have an open conversation. They could be what is considered more the panelist side um, style, which is you probably have guests more than one and you want to interview them for a period of time and then have Q&A. So the type of room that you want and what you're trying to get out of the room also matters. So as you navigate around Clubhouse, you're going to see different different style and, and that's the reason. This is Angelique and I'm done speaking. Yeah, so that's that's um, that falls under you know, topic six in, in the uh, in the the moderation training write-up that we did, uh, KYS or Know Your Stage, right? And playing favorites, right? So not everybody is created equal. I'm sorry, you know. I believe in equity and equality and things like that. But if you're having a conversation about epidemiology, for example, and you've got Ascari Anderson in the room and, and two other epidemiologists, you want to make sure that they get a chance to speak and to be the ones to answer the questions, right? So so you know your audience and, and your audience wants. To hear from experts who are related to the topic at hand right and so if you even if you don't know them right so if we go and look at christina and i didn't know christina when she first came on stage but i i looked at her profile and it was a lot of really good stuff that i agree with and i thought that she would probably have a lot to add to the stage so so she gets allowed on stage whereas other people who have raised their hands who might have been against you know about banning circumcision or just have nothing in their in their profile and this happened uh, while we've been talking here and those people weren't led on stage right so knowing your audience and, the, and being able to stay topic focused and if you're not sure if they have open 
messaging, you can DM them and say, or whoever's working security can DM them, uh, direct message them using Instagram or Twitter, um, and and hey, say hey, uh, you know, what, what would you like to talk about? You know, in a nice way, um, and that that gets to another point, which is be ready for connection. Okay, so I'm just going through the list of things that we wrote about here. And so number five is be ready for connection. So fill out your profile and make sure it communicates what you want to communicate. Let's say you're doing a company that has remote patient monitoring, but you also um, are very religious or, uh, you know, a hand model or whatever, right? If the reason you came to Clubhouse is to, to work on your RPM company, uh, as opposed to get more hand modeling gigs, um, you know, you want to make sure your profile is talking about your RPM, you know, primarily. That's the first three lines are very important. That's what people see before they say, give me more information. So that's your that's your teaser. So in my case, you know, it says dad, healthcare innovation, enthusiast, community leader, VC, right? That's, those are the, you know, some of the main things about me that people might want to know. Now, you might say get rid of dad, but I'm never getting rid of dad. So, you know, so I start with that uh, just because it's part of me and, and who I'm always going to be. Um, and that's, you know, it, it, it might not be good for my venture fund, but you know what? It also is part of how I behave. You know, doing a moderator training session is just, you know, dad explaining, you know, how to do something to, to all the noobs. Uh, and also people who've had a lot of experience because, you know, we've been doing this, you know, thousands of hours already this year. We've run about 560 events, um, and I've run a lot of them myself, and I've been part of a lot of other people. So, you know, we, we're certifiable experts in this area, I would say. And not just me, but a lot of people on stage. Okay, so that was point five and six. Uh, so what are we up to here? Uh, Patrick, do you have another one, or are we going to let it go on to Michael? And did I miss something while I was off doing other things? So feel free to, you know, stop me. Please stop me if I'm going over the same point because I want to keep this as succinct as possible. Michael, do you got something? Yeah, um, I think uh, the power um, in moderation, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes offline. And, um, and then when you're on the show, for instance, like the Startup Struggle, which we do every Thursday, hosted by MedStarter Healthcare Innovators, um, I have found the co-moderator Meta, who is a founder, startup founder, is really one of the most powerful um, validations as we are bringing other successful founders. So I am merely the host, the gatherer. So that is my role. So I guess I, I would stress, know your role and know your other values of your other moderators. So. I do ask a question or two, but then with that being said, the main drive of the show, which is the startup struggle, is founder to founder, Meta, the other moderator, asking good, uh, real, live questions to the to the to our guest, the the founder CEO. That's whether you know, and um, also the audience so we really at some point we try to bring in the audience sooner than later to engage that 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 magic um but it is um you know there are people that are gifted moderators not all people are um you, you know so just know know your strengths and i think also have fun you know and and try You're delighted. It's just me, or is Mike's, about. Mike's mic messed up? No, yes, it's it's the no. Okay, so this I'm happens. Just talking too much. Yeah. No, no, no. Can you that's hear me better now? Yeah, you, 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 you lost the signal or something. So okay. you trailed off where. Yeah. Now, um, but the whole. Yeah, you're talking. You're talking about your co-host being a subject matter expert. Um, and then letting her run with it. So welcome, Christina. She's new to our stage, so thank you for coming. And this is also a demonstrable point 
always be nice, always be polite. Talk to people the way you want to be talked to, especially the first time you're meeting somebody. So it's so nice to meet you, Christina, at Ready Profile. Love what you got there, whatever your thought was. You as well. You as well, Alex. And I don't know if you remember, I, I met you in a welcome room uh, some months back. And then the next day, introduced you to Aisha McCain. What? Uh, you're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I that, was the one wow. You're, you're the one who room. brought in Black Girl Ventures. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yes. Well, oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I met so many people here. Yeah. That was a yeah, yeah, I know ever feeling. pitch event. And, and honestly, I got a visual memory. So somebody like Gwen, you know, or Angelique or Michael, like I know their pictures, you know, and then there would, but this is not the same picture as that day. Also, yeah, I don't think the BGV is on your profile anymore, is it? I don't think that it may not be. I ended up with such a storybook in there that I've been trying to whittle it down. Yeah, I hear you. Um, and also, they didn't really show up for that. You showed up for that. So. Anyway, so so I appreciate you, Christina. No, I remember that distinctly. Thanks for the reminder. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so on personality, uh, and I'm going to put on my communications hat here. Uh, this is going to sound super official. Go and have fun with it. <laughs> That's the answer. Uh, get on Clubhouse and, and move around in the different rooms so that you can test out and figure out what's your personality here on Clubhouse, what works for you, what works for your audience, uh, particularly if you don't have any past communications or speaking experience. Uh, it's important to find your voice uh, here more than you know just about anywhere else because the only thing people can hear is your voice. Uh, so as the moderator who's leading this room, who's setting the tone of the room, uh, you you definitely want to be uh, very clear on who you are. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of an example, I am a mixed bag. I know that I am a mixed bag. I'm someone who uh, can be quite cerebral, but at the same time, I, am, I like being an airhead. Like, you know, I like the fact that uh, I like to kid around and it uh, makes me a little bit more approachable than some of the other moderators or experts moving around Clubhouse. Uh, you know, as you see, uh, all I've got to say to Alex is, hey, you remember that welcome room? Of course he does, because I randomly jumped into his room <laughs> and, you know, acted as though I belong there. Uh, so, you know, that's sort of an example of how your, uh, your voice and the way that you carry yourself on Clubhouse can uh, help you to maintain uh, communications and networks with people uh, even after you haven't seen. I think I haven't seen Alex in maybe three or four months now. Um, so, yeah, definitely that. And I wanted to touch uh, really quickly. I know there was a gentleman earlier who asked, uh, essentially, how do you get people to move on uh, politely? Uh, one of the things, one of the old reporter tips uh, when you're interviewing someone is to always have a list of questions ready. Uh, so that you can, uh, as soon as they take a breath, everyone has to take a breath. We are human beings. We have to breathe. So as soon as they take a breath, throw in one of those questions. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And you know what? Uh, that leads me to X, Y, Z question and move into that question and they'll follow right behind you. And then someone, because you've thrown them off, uh, they are going to have a quicker response to that. And then right after that, either your mods need to be, one of your co-mods need to be ready to pick up the conversation or have someone in the room or like know your audience, you know, know who's on your stage, you know, who's going to like, you know, which questions will get the a specific person going. Uh, so ask one of those questions and, and naturally the conversation will move itself. Well, it's not even naturally though, but th those are excellent points, Christina, you know, do your homework ahead of time, make sure you know your stage you know, or you have your talking points. So in this case, I've got 32, you know, different things, which you can find on medstarter.club, um, on our blog, you know, it's from the four times we've done this moderator training session, we took notes. And so even though we're going to cover a bunch of them today, um, you know, I have my list of things to talk about if we run out of things. And also we thought it out, you know, we spent, you know, four hours, you know, writing this summary. And when I say we, I mean me. Um, and But I came from taking copious notes during the session. So if anybody comes up with anything that isn't on there, then you know we'll add them onto the addendum or we'll just edit it. 
but um but yeah so but but my point is only that that yeah be prepared do your homework have your list of questions especially if you've got a special guest speaker um so Gwen, you've been waiting very patiently and you're a relatively new moderator in our space, but you're not new to moderating and leading conversations and marketing and communications. So I'm looking forward to your insights on how to moderate well um, MedStarter style. Now, granted, you're relatively new to MedStarter, but I don't think you're going to say something like shut down people if they, you don't agree with them. You know. <laughs> No, no, that's for sure, Alex. Um, and if you I, did do that, I'd shut you down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> probably so. You'd probably kick me out, but it's okay. I, real quick, guys, I'm so sorry. I have to jump, and I didn't want to just jump without saying bye, but I've got to jump. I've got another room started. It is an excellent point. I know they've got a leave quietly button, but I still think it's a little rude. So so thank you for doing that, Christina, and being yet another example of how people should do things in the MedStarter Healthcare Innovator Method way whatever you want to call it uh style okay so thanks christina thanks we'll see you at the next room okay great and usually i would say you know please tell us what your room you're going to so people can follow them there if they want to but this is a recorded training session which incidentally here's another tip if you are recording a room make sure you get everybody's buy-in there are two ways to do this you can uh put it up on the top of the page like we did it says recorded with the big red dot and if you want to know how to get the red dot, you just search for icons for red dots. Um, and uh, you also should do a verbal, like I'm about to do now. Please advise if you are okay being recorded. If you are not okay, please say it's not okay. And we're going to go through and edit out everything you said in the past and delete it. Um, so please advise now. Your silence is consent. Okay, Gwen, <laughs> all you. No problem. Just piggybacking off of what Christina says, I think it's important for when you are deciding to moderate, just like what she shared, just to share your personality. Obviously, this is an audio only app. And so our voices, it can obviously show what we're passionate about and also to also listen to obviously the patients as well as the doctors and those that are experts in the field um, and ask those questions. So I just would say definitely bring your personality to it um, as much as possible. And I think this is just a great training that you're, you're having, Alex, for others in the room um, as relates to moderating because it does take some practice. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Um, I think the more rooms that you do, at least in my personal experience, um, the better and more comfortable you feel as, as relates to coming up and sharing what your knowledge is and what your expertise is. Um, the only other thing that I, I'm not sure if you, I, I came a little bit late to the room, um, but I, I'm not sure if this was shared or not, but kind of to your point, Alex, it, as relates to some of the rooms that people like obviously Christina just left. I also like to encourage people obviously throughout the time to like what some people say crowd surf because there are a lot of great individuals that are in these rooms and so clicking on encouraging people throughout the room hey look at look at us speakers and moderators but also take the time to look who's in the followed by speaker section and also the audience because if they're here in that particular room they're there for a reason they obviously share some shared interests as you so click on people's bios is always something that i like to encourage people to do is look throughout the room because a lot of times you may be sitting next to somebody who may, you know, make an impact on your your practice or your business. And that's what we want to do is obviously network here and, and collaborate. So that's something that I would share. And I know with the new feature um, update here on Clubhouse, too, like if you click on my face, for instance, you'll see that I have um, a room that I'm moderating today at 11 a.m. That's also a great way for you know your rooms to get additional visibility and for people to know where they can also catch you the next time um, here on Clubhouse. And I know within the notifications as well, they were updated. I know I got an update, I think this last weekend, where you can actually RSVP for events. So let's say I wanna say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be doing um, an event today, which is true, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You gonna go ahead and hit the bell. Um, for that and RSVP for that particular event or encourage people to, um, you know, save it to their calendar. I know that's something that I particularly do for my iPhone so I don't miss anything um, just so it's on my, my um, phone. You can also encourage people to do that as well, which will obviously get more attendance to your rooms and more visibility on what you're, you're passionate about speaking. So I'm not sure if that was covered, but I definitely wanted to just share that tip because that's something that I particularly do. And like I said, it encourages people to follow you. Um, as well as, I, I would say this is the last tip I would think of, 
is I know for some speakers, there's certain people and individuals that I'll, I'll go to their profile. I'm like, man, I want to learn more from them. And so when I follow them, if you notice next to um, the person that you follow, there's a little bell. And so I always encourage people, hey, if someone that you really resonate with, hit that bell to always. So whenever they come on and you want to speak or maybe be in that same room and get value from them, hit the bell to always. So that way you can obviously hear what they have to say. Um, I'm done speaking. Thank you so much, Alex. Oh, there's, there's a lot of gems, Jen, Gwen. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Jim from Gwen. Uh, and and uh, so, yeah, she's actually doing a room later today at 2 o'clock, and you can see that on social media for startups. Um, and you can see it by looking at her profile. Um, and and that those are all great points, and, and I hit the bell. Um, so I will always be notified when Gwen is around. Um, not just good for stalking, but, you know, good if you want to, you know, learn from somebody or what have you. Um, yeah, okay, I don't encourage stalking. Um, so, I... Uh, so Amanda, welcome to the stage. Um, I hope that I haven't forgotten first meeting you as well in some important way, like I did Christina. But uh, as far as I know, you're new to the med starter stage, so welcome. And how? What, what, do you have a question? Do you have a tip uh, that you'd like to share? Thank you so much, Alex. And I was trying to figure out when I met you as well, and I was like scrolling. One of my favorite tabs on Clubhouse right now is the Explore tab because since the clubhouse has gotten kind of chaotic in the hallway, I just always hit that explore tab and there you were. And I was like, oh, hey, I do a moderator training. Let's pop in and see what I can learn. And I have learned some stuff. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with people was the interests. Have you guys talked about the interest tab at all? Not at all. And I don't even know the explore tab. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, cool. So if you go to your hallway and you go down into and you just like scroll all the way to the bottom of your hallway, if you actually click the explore tab, you can see rooms that you would have never seen before. And so when I first got on Clubhouse, I was like, oh man, like I, I'm so interested in everything. I'm interested in sci-fi, I'm interested in metaphysics, I'm interested in, in psychology. I'm, I'm just, I had 60 interests. And I had a guy pop into my room and he said, hey, did you know you can get rid of some of the chaos in your hallway by getting, getting rid of some of your interests? And I was like, what, how do you do that? So every moderator training room I go into now, I share his tip because it has changed my entire clubhouse experience. Um, I so give, I so give an example. If I want to get the NFT ones out of my profile, out of my hallway, how do I get rid of that? Okay, so you click on the little profile picture at the top of your screen, the little version of you up in the right, and then you click the little cog wheel and you go to your interests, right? I have four interests and I still have a ton of information in my hallway. And then you just get rid of all of your interests except for what you're actually interested in. So I have welcome newbies because I do a moderator training Monday through Thursday in our club, sci-fi, philosophy, and then clubhouse because I really love clubhouse and I want people to have a good experience here. So then you're like, okay, well, how do you, how do you actually see what you're interested in if you're interested in 55 other things? You do exactly what um, Gwen was just talking about. You click the follow button and then you click the little bell. And that will actually give you the algorithm boost to see what those people are interested in. And since I have done that, I have had the best experience. I'm actually seeing what I want to see, which is really cool. So, um, and the reason I popped up here was because the doctor was asking how to kindly interrupt people. And I come off mic when I'm moderating the rooms and people are just going and going and going. And I'm in a lot of emotionally trauma dumping rooms with um, Dr. Renee and People are just dumping their emotions and people yeah. get inside their heads, right? They, they get inside yeah. their heads. So I come off mute and then I just, I interact with them in a conversation. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's interesting. Or I just, it's that open mic policy to get people out of their heads and back into the conversation. And then it never feels like they're being interrupted. So that's kind of what I wanted to pop in and say, Alex, I'm so glad I found your room and thank you for bringing me up. Oh, thanks for your for, thanks for sharing your knowledge, and it's great to have uh, the moderator training rooms. I, I didn't know about yours, so please feel free to invite uh, us or anybody here uh, to um, to your rooms, and we'll learn something and, and add in what we got. Um, and once again, I'll say it for the third time: go to medstarter.club at the top of the page. There's a section on our summaries of the moderator training. There'll also be a link to the video uh, we'll be doing from today. Um, and coming straight from the UK, uh, our favorite pharmacist, uh, Hala Abusin, 
<laughs> and this and this is actually a, a good moderator trick. If you know somebody and you want to, you know, appreciate them, you know, give them a nice little lead in intro. I think of it as like walk up music, you know, so that, you know, you just it's like a you know, like an introduction in a professional wrestling match. And so so Hala, you know, runs a lot of great rooms. She's one of my favorite moderators. And so um so welcome Hala. Also makes some Thank you. Really Thank you. That was, that was some build up, and and I'm wearing my taekwondo outfit as well, just to boot. Nice. <laughs> what? You had it 105 pounds. <laughs> I'm just just about on yellow belt at, at age 51, so I'm not doing bad. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. And uh, I just I just saw the the event listed, so I thought I'd come in and 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 talk talk to you guys and meet everybody here and. Um, being in the UK, I don't catch many of the rooms, but um, just it's just great being here and being part of a big family. And also one of the things that I really enjoy about um, being a moderator for, for the Med Starter Room is the fact that is that sense of family. You feel like you know everybody, even though you haven't met. So um, there's definitely a sense of community and connectivity in the uh, Med Starter Healthcare Innovators Rooms. And uh, today, actually this morning, I was with Davey and um, uh, Think, also Michelle. And uh, we, yeah, we run a room on, on patient journeys, patient experiences, and, and it just it attracts um, a wide a number and variety of, of, of people, listeners in the room, contributors. And um, yes, and I think the, the training actually works. And sometimes, you know, the training works by listening to others as well, taking in what somebody else says. And as you unmute your mic to speak, I always try and um, just acknowledge what the last person said, because uh, for me anyway, that makes me feel like I've been heard and acknowledged before we move on to somebody else. So, uh, oh, and Janet was with us as well this morning, actually. Thank you. So um, my name's Hala, and I'm done speaking for now. Well, I'd like to acknowledge what Hala just said. <laughs> Except that I wasn't really paying attention, so I'll be honest. Um, so, uh, because uh, we actually have another meeting going on right now, so Patrick had some questions. And that does get to a very interesting thing, right? A very important thing, that is if you cannot be present um, 100% while you're hosting, then hand off the hosting. Now, that was just like a two-minute thing, but I might say to somebody like Janet who, or somebody, anybody else who was listening, can anybody summarize what Hala just said in like 10 words or less uh, to show a good example of what she's talking about? Or even Hala can do it herself. Uh, Gwen? I'll, yeah, I can speak. Um, so she was just speaking to, obviously, within the room, when the speaker is done speaking, just to take the time to acknowledge them. So saying, hey, thank you so much, Hala, for your share today. I appreciate the value that you added to this particular room. That's just acknowledging the person that you heard them and that you also, you know, thank them for obviously their time and their contribution. I think that's also very important. I'm yeah, that, that's great stuff. So that goes back to rule number two, be respectful. and But take it to an extreme. Now, you don't want to be toxically positive. You want to continue to be real, okay? But you do want to, you do want to be that gracious host right um even if it's something like fight club it's probably even more important to have somebody being the gracious host even if somebody is being an instigator and there is something to be said for the good cop bad cop approach someone who's going to be asking the provocative questions and that we're going to look to and i usually do this as as the the creator of friction because right friction makes everything better um meaning you know it, you get more out of it when there's some friction. Um, but then again, you also have to have a lot of, um, you know, for lack of a better term, um, you know, libation or what have you, you know, so that so that there can be, you know, that sort of relaxed, safe environment uh, that everybody feels, you know, uh, appreciated, things like that. So going back to something Gwen said before, which is have fun with it and, and let your personality. Christina and Gwen both said this. But I, I want to say this, that if you're not having a good time, your audience isn't going to be having a good time, right? So I will say there's an exception. If what gives you a good time is being abusive to others, then that's, I mean, unless it's really funny and, you know, people know that you don't mean, you know, uh, mean it. But still, even if, even if that person 
knows you didn't mean it, if, because you're in front of a crowd, you never want to be mean or abusive. But my point is that in most cases, if you're having a good time, you know, uh, and you're giving other people a good time, then your room is going to grow and it's been going to become more popular and things like that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, be yourself, um, unless that self is somebody that you probably, you know, don't want to bring out in public. Um, and I'm not speaking about myself at all, really, not at all. <laughs> okay, maybe I am. Um, okay, so uh, any other points uh, that we haven't hit yet? I mean, I can go through the list. Well, I um... appreciate one point I wanted to make about being yourself, like the style of the room. Sometimes, like location, like New York is worlds away from Virginia as far as like the way we say things, like we tend to say it a lot, you know, expound upon and listen a lot and, and listen to details. My brother-in-law is from um, Detroit. And he's always like, you know, real sharp and like get to the point, get to the point. Other people appreciate that, you know, it depends on the room, you know, and the, the benefit. Definitely if it's a business discussion and training, you have to get to the point. But if you're listening to an experience, sometimes you do allow that um, person to, to kind of go on and on and then others will recognize um, that and be quicker and shorter and near response if someone really wants to get an expression out. I just wanted to point that out and um, the standard I'm done speaking. I thought I thought you were going to keep going so I could demonstrate how you interrupt somebody and say be brief but you did it for yourself but if somebody did keep on going so like you know Scarry if Scarry's going blah 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 you know what do you want to do that? <laughs> I just was hoping that you'd just open up your mic and go blah 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 and I would show how to interrupt. Who well, actually Angelique is very good at that. Uh, not going blah blah blah, but interrupting people and, and getting people to be brief. But let's just be clear: if somebody is going off, you can always open up your mic, as Christina, not Christina, uh, as someone was saying before. Um, and you know, we we do a lot of mic flashing stuff, so. If somebody wants to speak next, then we can talk about this. We'll flash our mic slowly. And if they're the host, you just open up your mic and the person speaking usually can see the mic is open and um, and we'll and we'll try to wrap up. Um, so if you see Angelique is, is flashing her mic slowly, so she might want to chime in saying, I'm ready to talk now. So then I'll say, Angelique, what were you thinking of saying? We'd love to hear from you. So timing of speaking is really hard too, especially if like people are driving or, or doing something else too. So personally, I hate dead air. I hate open mic. You know, uh, I forget who said it before. I think it was Glenn of being prepared um, or Michael did too. Um, and always having those questions ready to go. Um, so I always have three more comments ready to go. I've got my list of notes and things like that. So if I do offer the mic to Angelique and then, you know, your phone rings or whatever um i'm always ready for something else um so gwen did you want to say something yeah so i just wanted to actually just say um also as it relates to um moderating another great thing that also helps the algorithm from what i've heard at least here on this app is to also have people participate in the audience and so they also feel um you know involved in the conversation whether that's questions you want to ask or take a poll um, is also opening up hand raising as an option. So that also, um, from what I've heard at least, helps the algorithm for people also to find you um, in that particular, in other you know areas of Clubhouse. So I just wanted to share that as well for people that may be looking to moderate a room to also try to take the time to pull people so that way they can also contribute, right? You will, like, like what you're saying, Alex, we want to make it a fun... fun okay, so I think Gwen is trying to demonstrate the when somebody's going on and on on the same topic you want to interrupt yeah <laughs> so th thank you for doing that Gwen I wasn't sure at first but yeah I, mean, I feel like the third time saying the same thing um and so That's and it, red so, dark, so, so I apologize I, I there's also this really great video. function where you can turn off somebody's mic um <laughs> which I only do that jokingly um so we demonstrate it I, it won't be recorded oh, God, you know. you're so no. annoying <laughs> well, I, well, I mean... <laughs> okay so don't do this generally i mean my friends are just messing with me um but yeah so so you can turn off people's mics and things like that um if you need to and and to 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 go to the next point 
Pastor what Gwen was saying, uh, to build on that, as people say, to chime in or to piggyback or whatever, which incidentally, those overused terms get kind of old for me. Um, I would say that having inclusive conversations is what Clubhouse and Let's Start Our Healthcare Innovator Club is all about, right? So I always want to say, hey, folks, if you have questions or if you have uh, some thoughts that you've seen, some best practices you've seen, um, please come on up stage, raise your hand, hit that little hand raising button. Uh, and I, we almost always leave hand raising on. Um, so, so I'm really, um, uh, encourage anybody to come on up and then this, this is not just training. This is actually real. Uh, please, if you have questions or if you have comments or if you've got some thoughts we haven't covered, please be welcome to come up to this stage and, and share them. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, moderators, my co-host of the, uh, startup school show on Mondays at three 30, uh, Mr. Roland De Silva, strategist, healthcare innovation leader, um, and MedStarter Ventures mentor helps us do due diligence. He's just an all-around great guy and a great moderator, Roland. Uh, welcome to the stage. Uh, I, 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 know, I know you haven't been here for most of the conversation, but there are two versions of the write-up of the summary of all of the... Sorry, Roland, I'm just tell people this. This is recorded, um, so hopefully you're okay with that. If not, please say something. Um, so there's two versions. I wrote one, which is uh, very extensive, and Roland's is much uh, uh, briefer and to the point, um, and also includes some basic 101, you know, clubhouse stuff too. So he hasn't heard yet, but you know, so so Roland, we've done a lot of the basics. Um, so it, if you're gonna, um, so you're new to the stage, so just catch you up. So if you're gonna give a moderator tip, like make sure it's not in a, either of our summaries or it's a relatively advanced. And I know you probably got some of those. That's it, I'm done speaking. Thank you, Alex. So if I had to add an advanced point, it is what I would describe as the Clubhouse 2.0 experience. And at times when we are moderating, we may get carried away just by listening or hearing the conversation, but not necessarily looking at our screen. I think as a moderator, it is important that moderators also look at the screen in order to understand where and how the flow of the conversation is going. So one of the techniques I use, as we all know, we, we can use the mic button in a number of ways. So when people are clapping, yeah, Roland, I'll, 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 do, I'll do the demonstrating. You don't have yeah. to try to clap while you're talking. Okay, so doing a furious mic clap is a rapid mic clap, like what Alex is doing now. If you would like to make a point without interjecting, then you do a slow clap five times like Alex is doing. That is easy to recognize for a moderator when you do not have a crowded stage. So at times, I, another thing I have noticed is sometimes people come to stage either to park and ping, which is very helpful to build a following in a room. Whereas the others who come and just park to gain followers with the wrong assumption that they will be followed. So as a moderator, one of the things I do is I always say to our audience, follow the house, the green monopoly house at the top and follow the people on stage who have added value to you. Don't follow me if I have it added value to you. That's Roland and I'm done. Yes, those are excellent points and, and new ones too. So that's awesome. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, anything, anybody want to want to add to or chime in on, on what Roland's speaking, uh, said? 